A leaked draft opinion from the Supreme Court may overturn Roe v. Wade. Many are now asking, was it even constitutional? Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Have you ever looked around on a bright, beautiful 72 degree spring day and thought, we're just not angry enough? No? Just me? Well, let's calm everyone down with something more unifying, abortion. For almost 50 years, the landmark case Roe v. Wade effectively legalized abortion across the US. And 30 years ago, the Supreme Court case Planned Parenthood v. Casey upheld it. Roe v. Wade has been around so long it almost seemed like it was here to stay, kind of like Betty White. But a leaked draft opinion shows the Supreme Court is planning to overturn both controversial cases. It wrote in its majority opinion that Roe and Casey must be overruled. So it might suddenly go away, kind of like Betty White. The draft was leaked to Politico, which published it last week. The day after it was published, Chief Justice John Roberts confirmed it was authentic. As you can imagine, people took it in strides and went about their day as usual. Actually, this is what happened. Burn marks char the entryway at Oregon Right to Life in Kaiser. Police say around 10.30 Sunday night, someone tried to break a window at the anti-abortion organization, then lit two Molotov cocktails and threw them at the building. The Sacred Heart of Mary Church became a target. Somebody spray painted abortion rights messages on its doors and its walls. Madison police say it appears someone threw a Molotov cocktail inside the building. Far from bailed, the president of Wisconsin Family Action calls the message here clear. Written on the wall, if abortions aren't safe, then you aren't either. Wow, this is the most heated debate over abortion I've seen since literally any debate over abortion during the last 50 years. This leaked draft ruling was about a 2018 case called Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization. That case is about a Mississippi state law that banned abortions after 15 weeks, except if there were problems with the fetus or the mother's health was at stake. The leaked draft was written by Justice Samuel Alito, who was nominated to the court by President George W. Bush. According to Politico, four other Republican-appointed justices sided with Alito. The three justices chosen by Democrats are expected to vote against it, but their opinions haven't been made public yet. And Chief Justice John Roberts is still an open question. Keep in mind that this is just a draft opinion. The Supreme Court could still vote differently or keep the same votes but change the majority opinion. The final decision is expected to come out sometime this summer. So the leaked draft is kind of like a leaked Marvel trailer. The trailer for Infinity War had the Hulk in it, but in the actual movie, it was just Bruce Banner riding in the Hulkbuster armor. So what I'm saying is, maybe Roe v. Wade won't be overturned and we'll all get cool Iron Man suits. This has actually happened before. The Supreme Court changing its mind about Roe v. Wade, not the Iron Man suits. Back in 1992, conservative Justice Anthony Kennedy changed his vote during Planned Parenthood v. Casey, so the court ended up affirming Roe v. Wade instead of overturning it. So it could happen again. What is the Supreme Court looking at now? The question before the Supreme Court in this Mississippi case is whether all bans on abortion before 24 weeks are unconstitutional. In Roe v. Wade, the Supreme Court overturned state bans on most abortions. Now, this isn't the same as passing a nationwide law legalizing abortion, though. It simply prevented states from outright banning abortions, or at least some abortions. Because the ruling only applied to abortions that happened before the fetus is viable, that means before it can survive outside the womb. In Planned Parenthood v. Casey, the court decided that fetal viability is around 24 weeks. That essentially means that while states can restrict abortions earlier, states can only completely ban abortions after 24 weeks. But remember, the Mississippi law banned abortions after 15 weeks, with some medical exemptions. 
So the abortion clinic Jackson Women's Health Organization sued the Mississippi government, citing the Supreme Court's previous rulings. Both a U.S. District Court and an appeals court sided with the abortion clinic and struck down the state law. But the state of Mississippi has now appealed the decision all the way up to the Supreme Court, which means the Supreme Court can now reconsider its previous ruling on Roe v. Wade. Justice Alito said in his draft opinion that Roe was egregiously wrong from the start. Its reasoning was exceptionally weak, and the decision has had damaging consequences. Wrong from the start with weak reasoning and damaging consequences? Sounds like several of my past relationships. He also said Roe and Casey were not based on the Constitution. I'll explain why Alito said this after the break. Welcome back. Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito wrote in a leaked draft opinion that Roe v. Wade and Planned Parenthood v. Casey were unconstitutional. So let's unpack that. Yes, we actually read the draft opinion so you don't have to. Just to be clear, the Supreme Court isn't deciding on whether a woman should have the right to get an abortion. They're deciding on whether abortion is a constitutionally protected right. The court's job is not to determine which rights we should possess, but rather the rights we do possess. When Roe v. Wade was decided, it was based on the 14th Amendment. That amendment says that no state shall deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. It was this due process part that was the basis of Roe v. Wade. Justice Harry Blackman wrote in the ruling that due process includes the right to privacy, including a woman's qualified right to terminate her pregnancy. Basically, he was saying the state could not intervene between a woman and her doctor in the case of an abortion because that would be violating her right to privacy. The right to privacy is also why I told you to knock, Mom! God, haven't you read the Constitution? Justice Alito now argues, however, that the Constitution makes no reference to abortion and no such right is implicitly protected by any constitutional provision, including the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. He's right that abortion isn't mentioned in the Constitution. It'd be kind of weird if it was. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice and ensure domestic tranquility, which is why when sometimes we have a little whoopsie-daisy with a stripper, they should be allowed to flush it out. Ben Franklin definitely added that last part. The 14th Amendment doesn't even directly talk about privacy. Alito does agree the 14th Amendment has been used to guarantee rights that are not explicitly mentioned in the Constitution. But citing a previous Supreme Court case, Alito says these rights must be deeply rooted in this nation's history and tradition, and implicit in the concept of ordered liberty. And according to him, abortion is not. He says until the latter part of the 20th century, there was no support in American law for a constitutional right to obtain an abortion. Zero. None except for maybe Ben Franklin. Alito also says by the time of the adoption of the 14th Amendment, three quarters of the states had made abortion a crime at any stage of pregnancy, and the remaining states would soon follow. In fact, the last 30 pages of the draft opinion is an appendix of all the state laws that said abortion was illegal in 1868 when the 14th Amendment was ratified. Critics dispute Alito's recounting of history and American tradition. Although if you read this article, it's basically just saying that Native Americans used abortion and so did white and black women in America, not that it was legal in the U.S. And since Alito says that abortion can't be based on the 14th Amendment, abortion advocates warn that this is just the beginning of a rollback on other rights that are also based on the 14th Amendment. They say past decisions on gay marriage, interracial marriage, and contraception could be next. It's not just Twitter activists either. Both a Democratic congressman and a senator said the same thing. But Alito says abortion is fundamentally different from those other rights, something that both the Roe and Casey decision say as well. According to Alito, these other issues don't involve the critical moral question posed by abortion, so they're not undermined by the court's decision to overturn Roe. Alito also addresses a big argument for why the Supreme Court should not overturn Roe v. Wade. Because of the precedent, Roe said. There's a legal argument that the Supreme Court should be guided by their previous precedents. That was part of the reason the Supreme Court did not overturn Roe during the Casey trial. But Alito points out that some of the most important constitutional decisions have overruled previous Supreme Court decisions. 
He cites Brown v. Board of Education, which ended race-based segregation in schools. It overturned Plessy v. Ferguson, which said that segregation was fine as long as it was separate but equal. Overall, Alito is very critical of Roe v. Wade. You know, the whole egregiously wrong from the start thing. But even legal experts who are pro-abortion are critical of Roe v. Wade. One pro-choice law professor said Roe is barely coherent. The court pulled its fundamental right to choose more or less from the constitutional ether. Even liberal Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg had issues with it. For her, it was too far-reaching, and it made abortion rights an easy target for activists. She didn't like how it focused so much on the right to privacy instead of women's rights. She said she wanted abortion rights to be secured gradually through states and courts, not in one sweeping action by the Supreme Court. But if the Supreme Court really wanted to cement it, she said a better approach would have been to use the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Since only women can become pregnant, a law barring abortion discriminates against women, so her argument was that if Roe v. Wade were settled based on providing equal protection to women, it would have better stood up to attacks. But if you ask me, that's even more controversial. Women aren't the only ones who can give birth these days. What about trans men? And after this final commercial break, what will happen if Roe v. Wade is overturned? Welcome back. The Supreme Court seems poised to overturn Roe v. Wade. So you may be wondering, does this mean abortion will no longer be legal in the U.S.? You might think so if you just listen to pro-abortion activists. The Supreme Court is only meant to interpret laws, not make them. But because it's the highest court in the land, its rulings often carry the weight of law. Which is why Justice Alito says the Supreme Court should kick the issue back to the states. He says the court short-circuited the democratic process by taking the decision away from the people and their representatives. Before Roe v. Wade, states had different laws on abortion. Hawaii, Alaska, New York, and Washington had legalized abortion. So the ruling only affected the other 46 states, and even among those, more than a dozen already allowed abortion for a woman's health, field deformities, rape, or incest. Roe v. Wade essentially froze the process of states passing their own abortion laws. And some argue that's what deepened the political divide in America. Alito's draft opinion ends with Roe and Casey must be overruled, and the authority to regulate abortion must be returned to the people and their elected representatives. If this draft opinion is how the court ends up ruling, states will be able to ban abortions again at any stage in a woman's pregnancy. And that means some states will further restrict abortion or outright ban it. Others will pass laws to protect it. We know this because states have already passed what are called trigger laws. These laws would go into effect if Roe v. Wade is overturned. These states in blue and yellow already have laws that would protect the right to an abortion. The states in red either don't have any laws either way, or have trigger laws to ban or restrict it. Wow, this is like the darkest game of red light, green light ever. Even darker than the one in Squid Game. And that's saying something. So what do you think about Roe v. Wade? Is the Supreme Court right to overturn it? Let us know in the comments below. And we could not make this show without support from viewers like you. You can help us for as little as a dollar per episode at patreon.com slash America Uncovered or on our exclusive social media platform, americauncovered.locals.com. The links to both are in the description below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.